diabetes mellitus is prevalent in obese individuals and is associated with increased insulin resistance and a gradual decline in insulin secretion due to dysfunction of the pancreatic beta cells over a period of time leading to deficiency of insulin. Because of deficiency of insulin, there is elevated blood glucose level, the glycosylated hemoglobin is increased and there is dysregulation of carbohydrate and lipid metabolism in a diabetic individual leading to various complications. So the therapeutic goal in the management of diabetes is to reduce the insulin resistance in target organs such as skeletal muscle, adipose tissue, liver and to enhance the insulin secretion from the pancreatic beta cells and this helps to restore the insulin secretion and maintain euglycemia and helps to prevent complications. So one of the strategies in designing anti-diabetic drugs is to stimulate the pancreatic beta cells to increase the secretion of insulin and we have sulfonyl ureas and meglitinides that act directly on the pancreatic beta cells through the receptors and enhance or increase the insulin secretion by the pancreatic beta cells and helps to lower blood glucose. An alternative mechanism to enhance insulin secretion by the pancreatic beta cells is through incretin mechanism. So in this video we will learn about what are incretins and the incretin phenomenon, the various functions of incretins and how do they help in lowering the blood glucose levels and how do DDP4 inhibitors, a new class of anti-diabetic drugs helps in lowering the blood glucose level and exerts anti-diabetic action. Let us start off with what are incretins. Incretins are gastrointestinal hormones namely the glucagon like peptide that is GLP-1 and gastric inhibitory polypeptide that is GIP and these are known as incretin hormones. The incretin hormones are secreted from the intestine in response to ingestion of oral glucose or nutrients and they stimulate the pancreatic beta cells to cause secretion of insulin. So this helps in lowering the blood glucose level and helps to maintain the blood glucose level in a narrow physiological range and maintains euglycemia. So let us now discuss the incretin phenomenon. To understand incretin effect, it is important to know the physiology of insulin secretion in response to meals. So the figure drawn here shows the insulin secretion in response to meals in response to high blood glucose level. So in a normal healthy individual in the fasting state, there is constant low level secretion of insulin and this helps to enhance the glucose uptake by the peripheral tissues such as liver, muscle, adipose tissue and helps to maintain euglycemia. So this is known as the basal insulin. But after meals, after ingestion of meals or after ingestion of oral glucose, the insulin secretion is increased rapidly, quickly. There is considerable amount of insulin released into the circulation and this is known as postprandial insulin secretion, the insulin secretion that occurs after meals. And it has been suggested that 70% of the postprandial insulin secretion is contributed by incretin hormones. And which are these incretin hormones? These are glucagon-like peptide that is 1 and gastric inhibitory polypeptide. So GLP-1 and GIP are responsible for 70% of the postprandial insulin secretion and this occurs in response to meals when the blood glucose levels are typically rising. So in other words, after meals when the blood glucose levels are typically rising, the incretin hormones are secreted from the intestine and the main function or the primary function of incretin is to secrete insulin by stimulating the pancreatic beta cells and secreting and releasing insulin into the circulation and this helps in reducing the blood glucose level, helps to restore the blood glucose level to normal. So this is known as incretin phenomenon in which the oral ingestion of glucose leads to higher insulin release than intravenous glucose. So the primary effect of incretin is to stimulate the pancreatic beta cells to release insulin into the circulation which helps to lower the blood glucose level. The second function of incretin is to inhibit the glucagon secretion and we know that glucagon is responsible for increased production of glucose by the liver by the process of gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis increasing the 
the blood glucose level into the circulation. So by inhibiting or suppressing the glucagon release, the blood glucose level is normalized. This reduces the blood glucose level. The third action of incretin is that incretin inhibit gastric emptying and delays the entry of food into the intestine, thus inhibiting the absorption of food in the intestine and helps in controlling the blood glucose level. The fourth action of incretin is the incretins reduce appetite. So they improve satiety and this helps in reducing the food intake, thus reducing the blood glucose level and helps to control the blood glucose level. Lastly, several studies have shown that incretins restore pancreatic beta cell mass. This helps in increasing the insulin secretion, helps to restore the insulin secretion and helps to maintain blood glucose level in the normal range. So these are five important mechanisms through which incretins lower the blood glucose level, helps to normalize glycemia, helps to maintain the blood glucose level in a normal physiological range. So up to now we have discussed the blood glucose loading mechanisms of incretin hormones which are gastrointestinal hormones namely GIP1 and GIP. So these incretin hormones are very useful in lowering the blood glucose level and this could be useful in the management of diabetes. But, but the drawback is that these incretin hormones have a very short plasma half-life of few minutes. So they are easily degraded and destroyed by an enzyme which is known as DPP4 enzyme which is responsible for destruction and degradation of incretins and leading to a very short half-life of incretins. So the usefulness of incretins is reduced because of the destruction by the DPP4 enzyme. So one of the strategies in drug designing in the management of diabetes is to develop DPP4 inhibitors and these drug molecules are responsible for inhibition of DPP4 enzyme which causes destruction of incretins. These drug molecules by inhibiting the DPP4 enzyme increases the incretin hormones, increases the levels of GLP1 and GIP and this helps in lowering the blood glucose level helps to restore the insulin secretion, helps to normalize glycemia and is very useful in the management of diabetes. So now let's see how are the DPP4 inhibitors are beneficial in diabetes. Now in diabetes, the incretin effect is decreased so the post-prandial insulin secretion also gradually declines. And because of the decline in post-prandial insulin secretion, the patient presents with high post-prandial blood glucose level. So the DPP4 inhibitors by increasing the incretin levels by 2 to 3 fold increases the plasma half-life of incretins, increases the duration of action of incretins, the GIP1 and the GIP action is prolonged and this helps in lowering the blood glucose level. Secondly, it has been seen that in a diabetic individual there is dysregulation of carbohydrate metabolism. So there is increased glucagon production which leads to increased hepatic production of glucose which increases the glucose release into the circulation. So DPP4 inhibitors by increasing the incretin level suppresses the glucagon concentration, suppresses the glucagon release and this in turn helps to lower the blood glucose level and helps to normalize glycemia. The other beneficial effects of DPP4 inhibitors is that by increasing the incretin level the gastric emptying time is delayed, the intestinal absorption of glucose is reduced and this lowers the blood glucose level. Also the appetite decreases, so the food intake decreases, this further decreases the blood glucose level and also it has been discussed that the pancreatic beta cell mass is also increased. So this helps to restore insulin levels. So with this we have discussed what are incretins, the incretin phenomenon, how are incretins useful in lowering the blood glucose level? How to design anti-diabetic drugs that enhance incretin effects? What are the advantages of DPP-4 inhibitors? The mode of action of DPP-4 inhibitors as anti-diabetic drugs. So thank you for watching. If you find my video useful, please like and subscribe to the channel. 